Uh, boys and girls, we are right in the middle of the work week. Uh, they like to call it hump day. Uh, I just call it, we're almost there to Friday. Uh, look who we have today with us on Stirring the Pot. This is Stirring the Pot with Don Kincaid and my very special guest, Soul Taker. How are you, my friend? I'm doing good, Don. I'm doing good. You know, doing my thing and doing, you know, what needs to be done. Uh, hey, that's what we got to do nowadays because uh, I'll start right off there. Uh, the world right now, my friend, topsy-turvy, a lot of craziness going on. Uh, we still got yes, this yeah. whole virus thing going down. Uh, so let me start right with all of that. Uh, yourself, your family, you know, your friends, your circle, you guys are A-OK? Oh, yeah, we're good. We're good. Um, we try not to, you know, be outside that much. And we got to go. We'll just, you know, go with, if necessary. Um, I heard on the news that the state is going to start reopening again. Um, so, you know, thanks for that. People are listening and, you know, taking the measurements they need to, me to take, you know, and uh, it's good. It's good. It's been good. Th that's good news. And yes, uh, restrictions are going to start being lifted. If I'm not mistaken, uh, the third week of March, we're right there, my yep. friend. Uh, start getting yep. those lifted. And then you never know, maybe a couple months down the road. They might lift everything. We just don't know. We got to take it day by day, week by week. Uh, so yeah. I'm glad to hear that everybody's well. Uh, now, let me get into this wrestling portion of the program because of what's been okay. going on with the virus. Uh, we talk about, and I know this is about the soul taker, but this is a, a, a fantastic start right here. Uh, because on this show, we like to talk about evolution of wrestling, uh, wrestler, uh, fans, because everything changes little by little with wrestling oh, yeah. and, and, and spurts, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen what it was to what it is now. Mm -hmm. And uh, could you give me your take? And I know this is a weird place to start because, again, this is about Soul Taker, not about wrestling in general. Uh, could you give me your take? Because uh, I like to pick the, the heads of the talent. Uh, how are you feeling? Uh, because I'm sure you're watching the product on TV. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how are you feeling about the transition of what's been happening? Because there was zero fans for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, AEW and WWE alike started bringing in some of the workers on the sides, if you will, and giving some yeah. cheers and, and praises for the boys and girls and some booze. Got to have those booze. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, WWE breaks out with this Thunderdome, totally different experience. The production is over the top. Uh, probably cost a, a good penny to get that done. Uh, talk to us, the fans. What are your thoughts on the transition of what's been going on with wrestling? Well, Don, um, my take and personal take on it, um, uh, everything has to evolve over the years. You can't just stay the same because the fans get bored of just be, you know, seeing the same day by day, day by day. You know, you need to evolve. You need to adapt. Um, you need to reinvent yourself um, every time. Um, and, and it's, how can I say this? Um, it, it, it's like a balance. You know, it's good and it's bad at the same time because it's good because everybody's safe. You can watch it, you know, from your phone, from your computer, um, anywhere. Um, you don't have to be present, you know. You don't have that fear that if, if I'm going to cash this or I'm going to get this. Um, but on the other hand, you you miss the excitement of being live there where the adrenaline and and you got the mystique you got the fear you got the happy you got the anger you know that feeling when you're inside a, a wrestling event and you know you see people cheering and screaming and booing that energy it, it's not the same you know it's not the same when you people are just watching through a screen than when they're present at the moment uh, it, very well said uh, very well put because, you know, and, and, and I'm going to go on record in saying this, and I hope I don't get slack for it. Uh, but when wrestling and the pandemic, when the pandemic happened and wrestling just stopped with yeah. all the viewers, the very first SmackDown that WWE, because I mean, I got to applaud WWE and company for giving us product continually, though. OK, so let me start there. But uh, to be honest with you, sir. I saw that very first SmackDown that they produced with no fans. And there was a thing with Sasha 
and uh, Bailey going on, if I'm not mistaken, at the time. And they're cutting promos on, like, <laughs> they're cutting promos on Michael Cole uh, at the announce table. That really, I'm like, okay. Yeah. I, I turned the damn thing off, and I didn't watch. And, I, and again, I hope I hope my friends that do watch this <laughs> don't pee on me for this. I stopped watching wrestling for a couple months, my man. Uh, I paid attention. You see the highlights on the gram yeah, and the book yeah. and all of that. But, I mean, to turn on SmackDown and Raw Weekly, I took a small break. Uh, did you find yourself doing it, or did you keep rolling along with the product? Well, when the pandemic hit and... WWE and independent wrestling uh, stop out of the blue, you know. Um, uh, I started, you know, getting back into watching WWE, um, but there was a lack of audience, so the promos were not the same. The attitude of the wrestlers were not the same. Um, the energy they put into a match was not the same. Um, so yes, I, I decided not to continue watching WWE for a couple of months. Um, and then I went back and then I'm seeing some, and I'm sorry to say there's some ridiculous things going on in WWE. Um, that makes me hold back a little bit more and maybe waiting for a change or a better change. And I know that WWE is not, is not specified as pro wrestling as more as an entertainment company. Um, and basically what they're doing and this, they're getting this, uh, uh, screenwriters from, you know, different genres, you know, uh, soap operas, uh, movies, uh, theater, and they're, you know, it's entertainment. We got to call it like it is. WWE is not pro wrestling is entertainment. And what they're doing is they're, they're, and they're changing it because at the beginning of the eighties, and 90s, WWE was one of the best pro wrestling companies out there. You know, they had the real talent. They had these people um, um, creating their own stories. Um, and people were loving it. But then when the 2000 hits, that's when they decided to evolve with the times. And they started bringing um, screenwriters and, you know, novel writers. And they started changing everything little by little. And I'm telling you, and I'm being honest... The WWE now is not the same as WWE before, you know, it's not the same. Um, I hear that a lot from people that um, that have been fans of WWE since, you know, 70s and 80s, you know, and they're telling me it's not the same. It's not the same product. It's not the same delivery. Um, and I concur. It's not the same, you know, and I know everything. Like I said earlier, everything has to evolve. You cannot be the same all the time because you people get tired of you so you need to evolve you need to readapt um and recreate um something different uh, a lot said right there all, all in one segment um a lot to pick and choose from here uh mm -hmm. but what i am gonna grab though is the product continues and we see what's going on mm -hmm. you my friend are not the only uh, talent that I've spoken to, uh, and I know you still keep an eye on that pulse yeah. of the WWE. Yeah. There's a lot of talent out there that will straight out tell me they don't watch. Um, no. it, it's yeah. it's just not their bag no more because of what you just said right there. You know, and you know, you know, Don, you know what the the real thing about it is? There's a lot of independent wrestling talent out there that are awesome to watch that are good um but they don't get the chance to you know make their craft known in a higher level because some companies they just want this guy because this guy's been in tv for so many years instead of just saying hey i'm gonna hold you down a little bit let me give a break to a new kid, you know, let them shine a little bit, let them get their craft out. And what they're doing is every time WWE comes to a town, they'll hire these local talents that are awesome. But what they do with them, they'll just use them as a jobber. You're in this squatch you. They'll just, you know, make you look ridiculous. Oh, at times, those are the things, you know, even upcoming in, in the independent scene, 
sometimes those are the moves that a promoter will want you to do. Uh, mm -hmm. We want this guy to shine. We're going to have you come in and do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I can see it from talent to talent, company to company, and I've seen it firsthand. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, what I have seen, though, is on the flip side of that, we see the likes of talking of evolution still. Mm -hmm. We see the likes of NXT. We see the likes of AEW Dark right now. And I know yeah. AEW is still a, a very, very young company. But AEW Dark specifically, and I'm not shining away from Impact Wrestling of what they're mm -hmm. doing just yet. Uh, but AEW Dark, uh, just this past Tuesday, because I'm usually watching every Tuesday. It's on YouTube. You can watch it live Tuesdays mm -hmm. uh, at 7 o'clock. And I'm not plugging the AEW specifically. But what I am plugging is what they do is bring in 15 it's evolved in a short amount mm -hmm. of time 15 matches in one show so they run for like two hours straight and these matches come out bam 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 one after another there's not a lot of fluff in between yeah. there's not a bunch of this and that you have taz and uh you know excalibur commentating or whoever's mostly that's who's been doing the commentating mm -hmm. um but my point being is we've seen a lot of the indie talent being able to get to a different platform without having to be called up by Uncle Vince and yeah. Triple H, if you will. And yeah. I know NXT is part of that whole scenario. Yeah. And we have seen them split the ways of what's going on with the talent along with Impact Wrestling because we're seeing some of the, our familiar faces on that program as well. Um, so I really feel that right now that wrestling is very, I mean, more flourishing than ever. That's very evident. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's changing. It's changing. Yeah, there's too much wrestling to keep up with, to be yeah. honest with you. And as a wrestling fan, it kind of it kind of sucks because I love seeing so much wrestling that's out there, but I can't keep up with it all. Uh, <laughs> um, and I know, again, we've been running about 12 minutes and we've kind of been focusing on the evolution of mm -hmm. what we've seen in wrestling. But I, I wanted to really pick your brain at that. Uh, and I hope. Yeah. Uh, you didn't mind that we didn't go right to Soul Taker oh, no, talk. No, 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 no. Th thank you for that because everybody has a different perspective, mm -hmm. um, and I like to get those. Uh, <clears throat> now let's push that aside uh, and, and let's get to some Soul Taker talk because that's why we're here. Okay. Uh, so we met at NEWS uh, maybe a year or so, uh, two uh, ago. Two years. Two, two years, years ago. ago. Uh, yeah. New England Wrestling Superstars, yeah. and uh, from what I remember, you were running out of the Chicopee area. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you do a lot of production with the cameras, multi-camera angles. I see there was a lot of production over at NEWS. Uh, it's more of a, a Latino-based uh, company, uh, if you will. Yeah, I, I, I mean, there's a mixed bag. I'm not saying that mm -hmm. it's just Latinos. But I see there's it's it's a strong Latino base being the fan mm -hmm. and, and wrestlers alike. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I don't know exactly Latino being Puerto Rican or, or what have you. Uh, so mm -hmm. let's start with you. Uh, where do you come from and, and how did you ever get connected uh, with NEWS? Well, uh, my story is simple. You know, I was born in Seattle, Washington. Oh. Um my dad is a mixed race, you know, he's Hawaiian and Puerto Rican, and then my mom is Puerto Rican, but my dad was in the military, so he, he, um, he traveled a lot, um, we moved a lot. Um, when we finally moved to Puerto Rico, um, I was like 12, 13 for the first time. I did not speak Spanish, I did not write Spanish, um, they had to pay a tutor to teach me. Um, by the time I was 18, um, I, I, I wanted to become a wrestler because at that time in Puerto Rico, wrestling was big. You know, they had the WWC, they had IWA, you know, it was a big scene for those two companies. But at that time, those big companies had a requirement to be able to become a wrestler. You had to be at least minimum six feet tall and 200 pounds. Really? <laughs> yeah. Um, they had regulations. Um, wow. So I was... By that time, I was six foot three, six foot two. By that time, um, I was 120 pounds. Um, so, if I wanted to become a wrestler, I needed to gain weight. So, I joined a gym. 
Um, did, started doing some milkshakes, some mix-ups. Um, I ended up weighing uh, 297 pounds in three months. Oh, what? Yeah. Yep. Um, so <laughs> after that, I, be, I tried to get into wrestling school. Um, the problem was I was first generation. You know, I didn't have a, a dad or an uncle or grandfather. You know, I was first time for my family. Um, so it w- they told me it was going to be hard. It was going to be uphill. You need to have a backup. You know, you can't just come like out of the blue. Nobody knows you. Nobody knows who you are. And I told the, the at that time, the, the school owner, um, it was Paquito Medero in Agua Buena, Puerto Rico. Um, I told him, you know, I got the, the, I got the hunger. I got the drive. I want to learn. You know, I, w- I was even afraid of heights. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So he saw in me something. Um, he took me in. At that time, they were charging, sing- uh, I think it was like $350 a week. Um, so I went in. Um, and, you know, at first I was scared of doing some moves, like the front flip, the, you know, the back bumps, um, third ropes, you know, um, and then he got me going and then he started seeing in me, he says, you're, you're what? Six, two, six, three. Um, I was like, yeah, I'm six, two. And he says, you move like you're like five, six, five, seven. So you, you're very agile for your height and your weight. I was like, well, I told you I'm, I'm hungry for this. You know, I want this. Um, uh, when I graduated, it took me a year and a half because they really took your time, their time to teach you the right ways. Um, it took me a year and a half. I graduated. My first match, they gave me just a random name. I was called the, the, the Latin Kid. That was the name, the Latin Kid. Um, and I won my first match. They gave they they gave me a, a trophy for rookie of the of the year. You know, I was oh. the, for the you know the outstanding student of school. Um, and then um, a few months later, um, this promoter from Virginia uh, was there on vacation, and he heard about a wrestling event in San Juan, so he decided to go. Um, he goes in and he's there in the audience. Nobody knows about it. Because he was just like everybody else, sitting, paying, uh, fan. And I did my match. At that time, I, I, they gave me another name. Um, I was going by uh, Johnny Rock. Um, and that's when the promoter, after the show, comes up to the promoter of the current show and says, hey, you know, I would like to talk to this guy. Um, and he was surprised. Like, you know, he t- even told him, you know, he, he's young. He's just been out for, you know, a couple of months. He says, well, I like what I saw, and I want him to join my company in Virginia. So um, he came up to me. He sat down. He says, you know what? And I'm talking about Mr. Latour Datney. He's the owner of HPW in Virginia. Um, he came up to me, and he said, you know what? I, I, I like what I saw. I know you're young, but that's the, good, the, the beauty of it is you're young. You're, you're like a sponge. Um, and you're big, you're agile, and you know you you know how to work the crowd. Let's do this. Um, so I was like, okay, <laughs> you know, first time. Um, so I, I flew to Virginia. Um, my first match was in Halloween Brawl in Fort Lee. Uh, um, it was Fort Lee, Virginia. It was the Fort Lee Army Base. It was a, a wrestling event for the troops. Mm-hmm. Um, I wrestled against Carnage. Um, we never set down. Yes. Carnage, yes. <laughs> what name are you going under against Carnage? I was going uh, with uh, Johnny Rock. Okay. That was the name I was going with. Um, I wrestled against Carnage. We never sat down. Um, we only saw each other once, and it was in an a autograph session in Walmart in, in Virginia where, you know, I was going out. I was finishing my shift at signing autographs, and he was coming in. And the manager of Walmart comes up to me and says, I would love if you guys will go at it, you know, because it'll, it'll pump up the, the people here and want them go and see the show. So I, I, I just looked at Carnage. He opened his eyes. I just went at him. And we started fighting. He threw me against the, the food and the, the cans. And it was a mess. When we, went, when we hit the show, we did not sit down and said hey we're gonna do this 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 is the, the booker just sat down to me and says hey it's gonna be a, a draw 
Okay, it's gonna be a double disqualification. Um, you're gonna take it outside after 10 minutes, and then we're the ref is gonna count 10. You're both gonna be disqualified because he was the United the United Nations champion, and I was giving the honor for the first time. That was the first title I had in my hands was the Caribbean Championship. Oh wow! So it was the United Nations versus Caribbean champion, champion versus champion. Um, so we went into to the match without knowing each other, without knowing his good, his bads, without knowing my good or bads. We just went at it. Mm. When the match was finished, we head to the locker room. He sits down. He says, son, I've been doing this for 20 years. And I've never wrestled with somebody that I don't know. As of, we had a hell of a match. Like, people were screaming, we want more, we want more. And he was like, I've never wrestled with somebody like that, where we just looked at each other. We, we, we knew what we were going to do. Mm -hmm. So we hit it after that. Um, after that, uh, I, I came back. I went back to Puerto Rico because I did have a, uh, uh, an offer from a company down there um, okay. owned by Savio Vega. Um, he okay. had his own independent promotion, um, and he still does. Um, so I went down there, but he wanted me to train with another trainer. So he sent me to Caguas, where Shane the Glamour Boy had his wrestling school. And he put me in there. Uh, he says, well, you're going to pay for it, but I need you to, uh, him to train you. So that's when I started training in different, you know, because I was trained more as a heavyweight than a light heavyweight. And okay. Shane was more light heavyweight. So... He was going to train me to move a little bit lighter and move faster. So that's what I did. That's where I met Ricky Banderas. Because Ricky was a, a, one of the uh, teachers there. He, you know, whenever he came to Puerto Rico, he'll go there and teach, you know, some stuff. He gave him a little about uh, his knowledge in wrestling. Um, and then um, they saw the same thing. They said, you know, you're good. You know, um, I know you're, you're young. You're just starting out. They even asked, you know, you have a father. I was like, no, I'm first generation. He says, for a first generation wrestler, you're going to do big things if you put your mind to it. So that's when I decided that um, I needed to put my name out there. Um, I, I started in 1999. That's when I started wrestling. Um, and then two years later, I got a call from XWF in Florida. Um, and I decided I, I needed to get my name out there. So they did call me. We did have a call and they sat down with me and said, you know what? Uh, I love what you're doing, but we, we need to give you a, a, a name with a history. You need to have a, a, a story. You know, you can't just have a name and, you know, don't have a backstory on what's going on with this character. Um, so I didn't go there uh, at that time to Florida. Um, cause they told me, figure out what you're going to do, what name you're going to use, uh, you know, do this, do that. I ended up getting a call from X, uh, IWA, IWA in Puerto Rico. And they offered me, uh, the first character they offered me was a Spectro. I was a huge character in Puerto Rico. Um, but I didn't take it cause I felt I wasn't ready yet for that type of level of wrestling. Um, and I was honest. I told him, you know what? I, I'm, I feel I'm not ready yet. Um, and I don't want to say yes and then, you know, mess it all, all up. So I just decided not to take it. So then I, I called Savio and, and, and I told him, you know what? I, I don't know what to do. I don't know anything about wrestling. What I'm knowing is what I'm getting to know every day by day. Mm -hmm. um, so he gave me some tips and some advice. Um, you know, he was like, you know what? Um, you need to sit down and figure out what type of character you want to be, and then figure out a story for that character. I was like, okay. He says, um, I told him, you know, can you give me an example? He says, okay, so um, let's say uh, the son of Jason, Jason X. Um, he is the son of Jason Voorhees, and, you know, he's doing this and doing that. I was like, oh, okay, so I get it. Um, so when Soul Taker came out, it was in 2000, 2002 um but I, I was creating the character for months i i decided to stop wrestling for a couple of months because when i when i came out i wanted to came out with that character that new character 
-hmm. So the promoter I was wrestling for at that time um, was uh, uh, TXW in Puerto Rico. He says, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do a story where Johnny Rock, because I, when I told him what, what type of character I was doing, he says, let's do this. Let's have Johnny Rock lose a match. But we're going to make the match a, uh, a burning match where the, the rope is going to be on fire. And, and when you lose, he's going to throw you against the fire and you're going to burn. You're gonna, yeah. So it was the first time I got burnt. I never felt something like that as painful as hell. <laughs> I didn't get burned that much. It was just a level burn, you know, level one burn. It wasn't that hot, that, that um, serious enough. But I didn't, I had never done that like, like, like that. Um, so that's when the character Johnny Rock died. Um, and four months later, um, after those four months, I was trying to create a character. I didn't know how to do it. So what I did was I took, and, I, and this is a spoiler to all the rest of us out there. Um, this is an idea they gave me, and I took away from that. So I okay. took a little bit of, of, of Michael Myers. You know who Michael Myers is, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. A little bit of Jason Voorhees, a little bit of, of um, Freddy Krueger, and just mix them all up. And then I remember when I was like six, I used to watch a cartoon named Soul Taker. It was a cartoon, okay. a Chinese cartoon. Um, and I was like, wait. Soul Taker. So I googled the name Soul Taker, and it came out a uh, a uh, 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 a double spirit that comes to collect the souls. So I was like, wait, I like this idea. This is where I'm going because I had different names, you know, Skull Crusher. Um, you know, I had 20 names, but then <laughs> that name kept an eye on me because it's a demon, you know, collecting souls. I was like, wait. So how about Soul Taker? And then adding the Devil's Bounty Hunter. Because when I Googled the Devil's Bounty Hunter, it came out as a, de uh, as a demon called Matus. He is the Devil's Bounty Hunter, which he does the dirty work of the devil, collecting the souls of those who sell their soul to them. So I was like, wow. wait. So this story, I'm, I'm getting, I'm, I'm liking what I'm, what I'm getting at. Yeah, it's so all coming together. I put, so I put everything together. And when it finally came out, people were amazed. They loved the, the gimmick. You know, I, ha I, wear, I, I started out with a mask. It, it was covering my whole face. Um, it had a, 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 a skull in front, um, but it was kind of broken. Um, no eyes. Because um, remember, demons don't have souls. So it, 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 it didn't show the eyes. Um, it had a long red, it was like, not red, it was like purplish um, velvet um, color with black, um, with flames all over the bottom of the, of the jacket, um, black pants, black and red boots, and then it, had, it, it used gloves. When that person came out, I had, I had a, a, a friend of mine who was a, a music producer at that time, um, and he made me an exclusive beat and theme song for that character. Oh, wow. Which I, which I lost because with all this traveling around, I lost it because I had it in the USB. It was awesome. Like, it had this scary little girl saying, you know, singing one, two, three, he's coming for you. And then a door shuts, a lady screams, and then this dark voice comes and says, he's here. And then it, the music stops. And then the music comes back, to, uh, like fire explodes on the background. And then it says Soul Taker. And wow. then it comes out and the music starts. It was awesome. So when that first beat hits and that character came out, people were like dropping their jaws. Like, what the hell? <laughs> I'm six foot four. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and people were like, in Puerto Rico, and I'm going to be honest, and I'm sorry for the, you know, my, my friends in Puerto Rico. Most of Puerto Ricans are not tall. Um, they're the highest they can go is six feet. That's it. You know, I'm <laughs> six foot four. These guys are looking like ants next to me. Okay. I'm going over the top rope like nothing. And people are like, wait a minute, where the hell you get this guy? So the promoter thought since soul taker is a demon, he does not talk. Let's put a manager with him and make the manager do all the talking. Mm -hmm. So I had handmade, uh, I had somebody handmade me uh, 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 like, a, a, uh, like a baton with a skull on top, 
Okay, and then the baton was basically my uh, my spine, and then you got the skull on top with the lighting red eyes, and then you got smoke coming out of the mouth, <laughs> and basically that skull represented my soul. He controlled okay. me with that. Okay. Um, the manager at that time was Venom. He is a current wrestler in Puerto Rico right now. Um, but at first time he was my manager, um, and he was awesome. He knew how to work the crowd. He knew how to get that mystery out there and getting people afraid. It was awesome. Um, but like I told you, you got to evolve over the years. You can't just keep on doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So in 2009, I was in uh, Portland. So the promoter said, you know what? Um, you've been doing this character for so long. Um, and I know people like it. But how about if we break free your soul it goes back to your body you get rid of the mask and then we turn you into a face wow so i was like well it's not a bad idea because my character was supposed to be neutral not a bad not good you okay. know i was more into like let the people the fans decide if they're gonna share or boo me the problem was that i was with a mask didn't talk and people were shared for me and i was <laughs> When I every time I hit to the locker room, I asked my my manager, I was like, "Why are people sharing me when I'm the bad, basically the bad guy? You know, the guy is is a good wrestler. He doesn't have a mask. He's doing all this flipping flops, but people are sharing me. I was like, what's going on? So that promoter said, you know what? Let's do this. Let's have uh, somebody, one of the wrestlers, take that baton and break it. And oh. basically, it's like representing your soul setting be free, goes mm -hmm. back to your body, and then you'll take off the mask, and then we'll turn you into, into a face Sorry for that. So I was like, you know what? It's time to change. I need to change. I can't do the same thing ever, over and over. So I did it. It was a success. People loved it. They, they was like, oh, so that's his face? Holy <laughs> crap. You know, he doesn't even look bad. Like, what the hell? <laughs> so I... I you know, I've been doing it since, um, and then the pandemic hit, and I decided to retire after 23 years in wrestling. Um, I did was I was inducted into the Independent Hall of Fame in Puerto Rico. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, um, they have an Independent Wrestling Hall of Fame there. Um, I was inducted to in it uh, in 2019, um, and I was. Thinking of staying retired, but then I got some calls from Tennessee and Oklahoma um, where they want Soul Taker to appear, um, and they're thinking of doing one, more than one show. Um, and like I tell everybody, because everybody calls me and texts me, hey, what you been up to? I was like, well, I'm doing my thing. You know, I've been to Puerto Rico. I wrestle in Puerto Rico. Um, I went to Spain to wrestle, um, you know, but now since the pandemic got a little bit more serious, they've... You know, some of those promotions hold that hold back a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this time to redo, reinvent Soul Taker again. Because oh. um, you got to do it. You got you can't just keep one character. And just, you got to evolve with the years. You can't just stay the same. So I took this time and redesign and recreated the whole Soul Taker thing. Um, oh, wow. And he's coming back. He's coming back. Uh, He's going to start back where his roots started. So he's coming back. Different well, coming out. Everything you just, uh, so informational. I, I love how you broke the history of the character and what you were previous leading up to where you are now. I really appreciate that whole breakdown because that gave us so much insight we love character on this show. At least I do. Uh, and, and I absolutely love character. And like you're saying, you need a backstory behind you. So getting these couple names, a lot, the Latin kid and Johnny Rocks, and there's nothing behind it. Um, I think a, a wrestler needs a character either from their true self and amp it up, you know, the, like they say, mm -hmm. amp it up to a thousand for wrestling. Mm -hmm. Or if you're starting from scratch, you got to have a story. Yeah. That character needs something behind him uh to go by uh why is he being such an mm -hmm. such an ass to our favorite face you know um yeah. stuff like that so uh, i i appreciate everything you just spoke of uh now i'm and gonna I, pick a couple 
Oh, go ahead. Uh, before you continue, um, there are some people I want to thank. Um, oh, please, yes. Yeah, I want to thank Kevin Laundry uh, because he he was the first one to give open the doors when I came to Massachusetts. Um, you know, uh, he was psyched to to meet me. I was psyched to meet him. Um, and you know, uh, uh, Richard Blake, you know, for um, giving me a spot in his company uh, when the time came. Um, Angel. Uh, from news um, to giving me a, a, a time and spot in his company when the time came. You know, I, I don't hold grudges against anybody. I'm a calm person, but so, different from my character because my character, <laughs> you know how it is, man. You know, but I'm calm. I'm I'm peaceful. You know, um, I, I don't hold grudges against anybody. You know, but this was told to me at the beginning, and I did not realize it until. A couple of years. Um, this business is not all happy dubby. This business is cutthroat and backstabber. I'm sorry for that, but it is. Um, but uh, I don't hold grudges against anybody. Um, you know, if I see him out there, I'll, you know, hey, how you doing? I'm fine, you know. Um, and I just want to thank those people, you know, Sabio Vega, Chain the Glamour Boy, um, Paquito Medero. Uh, um, the 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 guys in independent wrestling in Puerto Rico that wrestle against me or uh, wrestle with me, um, the wrestlers here in, in 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 the United States, even Portland, Massachusetts, Virginia, uh, um, um, Chicago, um, Spain, those people, you know, awesome. I met a lot of different people from a lot of different places in the world. I did in 23 years what most independent wrestlers haven't done in half of their time. You know, uh, I, I've, I've become champion. I've had championships um, at first. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. At first, who, whoever goes into wrestling and says he's not in it for a championship, he's a lie. Okay? Because um, when I first started, I wanted to be champion. You know, I was desperate to be champion. And then I learned over the years that championship doesn't make you you make the championship. So that's a piece of advice to all the independent wrestlers out there. Don't focus yourself on a championship because if you don't get it and you've been in a company for a year, two years, and they haven't given you a chance, don't worry about it. Your chance will come. And when that time comes, you make the championship. Don't let the championship make you. Uh, own it. Uh, very yeah. well said. A a absolutely. <clears throat> Uh, and I know you were talking about, you know, uh, the locker room drama, uh, just like in any facet of life, may it be the workplace, may it be uh, even hanging out at a bar. Uh, there's always some BS that happens and you push through it. And like you said, you, you know, there's no ill will. Hey, what's up? What's good? Yeah. You know, yeah. um, now, uh, when you first started describing your career, where you started and such, uh, uh, something that really stuck with me. Uh, what is with this six foot, 200 some odd pound or whatever requirement? I've never heard of such a thing ever. Okay. So in Puerto Rico in the 1990s, uh, they, they, the uh, wrestling uh, commission, because there, was a, there is a commission, a wrestling commission in Puerto Rico, they regulated the wrestling industry um, where you needed to wait a certain amount of weight and then be some some I'm uh, I'm on a height. You can't be lower than that because at that time WWE had these big and built up guys. So basically, the Puerto Rican wrestling wanted to compete with them. So okay. if they wanted to compete, they needed that same type of level of of body and built guys. They couldn't have a scrawny, skinny guy running around because there were you know it was kind of funny. So at that time, you needed to be at least minimum six foot. And no less than 200 pounds, you know, and that's when I started, you know, doing milkshakes and to gain weight and eating a lot of food. I ended up, no, and this is funny because I did it so badly because I wanted it that I ended up weighing 297 pounds. Uh, when you said that earlier, it blew <laughs> my mind because you were talking, you're like a buck 20. Uh, my man, I, uh, all my life, I've been very thin. 
I, I never wanted to bulk up. I mean, yeah, I would like to gain maybe 30 pounds or so, but I never wanted to be some kind of giant jack guy or whatever. So I never put that kind of work into my body. So when you were saying that you were X size and you blew up to this like almost 300 pound guy, uh, my man, holy cow. <laughs> yeah. And the problem with that was that I did make the cut to get a license to wrestle because in Puerto Rico, you needed a license. Um, so I did get the license because I measured up to their standards. Um, I was 6'4", 297 pounds. Um, but when I went into the ring, I couldn't run the ropes like I wanted to because I would get tired because I was too heavy. So I went back to the gym, took to my trainer and said, hey, you know what? I want to lose some weight. I don't want to lose it all. And I want to turn that extra weight into muscle. So that's what we did. So we did that. We did that. I went down from 297 to 252. Um, and then um, that's when I started doing my thing. I was more agile. I had more breath and this and that. Um, but the thing is, and this is, a, 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 this is something, I, I, and out of my experience, I want to tell the independent wrestlers, um, don't start mixing chemicals because the moment you stop going to the gym you your six pack will turn into a keg okay <laughs> um yes because if i show you pictures from 10 years ago you're like where the hell did that go yeah okay um you know i didn't like to go to the gym every day um but with the mix-up i was doing i needed to but i just didn't like it you know, because I was most focused in training and getting myself better, um, getting faster, um, instead of just, you know, getting weights. Um, right. But at that time in Puerto Rico, yeah, you need to you needed to be a certain amount of height, certain amount of oh. weight. Nowadays, they don't care. You can be four foot nine. They don't yeah. care. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, look at a guy like Marco Stunt in AEW yeah. hanging out yeah. with, you know, the, the Lucha Express there. I mean. Uh, the wrestlers come in all shapes and sizes, uh, all colors, all walks of life. Uh, and, and that's something. And, and I put a post up probably like, I don't know, 2017, I want to say. And it goes something like, uh, we're speaking about it and it just triggered me. It goes something like, uh, I love wrestling because it takes all walks of life, mm -hmm. uh, uh, religions, politic uh, you know, your ideas of politics, race, creed, uh, all, I, I listed a few things. And it brings us all together, my friend. Well, you know why wrestling does that? Because once, and this is something I was told, once you put your gimmick on, you stop being you and you become your character. Mm -hmm. That's why wrestling brings together, doesn't matter if you're black, if you're white, if you're Chinese, if you're uh, Vietnamese, if, Wherever you're part of the world you're from, we get together because once you go into your character, it doesn't matter. You're just a wrestler like him, you know? Um, and that's the thing. And that's the beauty of a wrestling because wrestling um, shows you that. And, and it's, it's the best example for the, for the politicians right now. Wrestling will show everybody. And it shows everybody. doesn't matter where you're from. You can get together and have a good time. Absolutely. You know, uh, always, and that's the beauty of it. I, I've always, always said that about wrestling. It, it's for everybody and anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think it's just um, wrestling is ap actually wrestling is a uh, universal language. Yeah. You, you know, uh, from and there's so many different uh, forms, uh, uh, forms of art of the wrestling that yeah. I've never yeah. even seen before. Um, and. and Maybe I should do some digging on some of the history because I'd probably be very surprised on what yeah, I run wrestling, into. Wrestling started with the Romans. Um, it wasn't called wrestling at that time. It was more as a combat, you know, strategy. And after the, like I said, evolution after the years, it went. It it went even. It wasn't even pro wrestling. It was after the Romans. It came became Olympic wrestling. So it was more Olympic type of wrestling and then that's when it transitioned from olympic to professional 
And that's when people say, oh, so you're an Olympic wrestler and I know a professional wrestler. So what's the <laughs> difference? Well, Olympic wrestling, you go for a gold medal and you represent your country. Um, professional wrestling, it's more entertainment. You know, uh, you get into a character. It's like you're an actor and you're getting paid to do a, a character in a movie. You know, um, the difference yeah. is um, it's not fake. Like most people think that wrestling is fake, you know. Um, I, I got a heavy hand, and the people who stepped in the ring with me know how heavy my hand is. And when I do a shot to the chest, they get not five, they get ten fingers. <laughs> so it is not fake. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not fake. You know, I've been cut in the, my forehead with uh, a, a Pepsi can. Um, I've been, uh, I fractured this uh, wrist once. Um, I had a dislocated shoulder. Um, so it's not fake. It's not fake. I'm telling you, it's not fake. Uh, it, it, that's for certain because yes, the people that always assume, you know, and, and, and I get that it's not all 100% real, if you will, yeah. you know, when a guy is getting shot to the face about 10 times and he's not bleeding and his teeth aren't falling out, uh, <laughs> the people that say wrestling is fake. I get that. I already know that. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, but for real, uh, like Mr. Soul Taker said, uh, that shit is legit as legit gets. When you're doing some of this stuff, your body feels it. Your mm -hmm. opponent's body feels that. Um, it's definitely not fake. Now, this character, and, and, and I'm sure just like uh, much of the talent I speak with, now you've created a character. It's not like your name uh, on your birth certificate is soul taker yeah. and you put some gear on and you try to get a little, pe mm -hmm. a little pep going before you go through that curtain, you're taking a character, you're masking up, you're gearing up. You've got the baton, you've got the skull, it's smoking in the eyes. And there's a theme going around this mm -hmm. said character. Uh, before you go through that curtain, uh, are you doing any kind of, ritual behind in the locker room or in the gorilla position uh, are you listening to music are you doing no, anything specific? usually what i do usually what i do is i pray to god that everything goes good um that you know both whoever is wrestling against me uh me and him get out of it you know with all our feet, fingers um and fine um because you never know there's always an accident um in wrestling um and I just pray to God, uh, you know, thank you for this day. I uh, hope, you know, me and my opponent gets out of it well, um, that we have a good match, um, that people like the match. Um, like the day that I announced in Chicopee that I was retiring in one of the shows, um, people didn't like that. And they started saying, you know, do not retire. They, they even made me cry. You know, I went out of character. They went, they made me cry. Because I didn't, re I didn't think people would respond to that like that. Um, but at that time, my doctor was telling me, you know what, your body, you you've been in this so many, so many, so so long that your body is not holding up to your standards, and you're not gonna end up in a wheelchair. So if you wanna keep on walking, just walk away now. Um, so I did want to, you know, do what the doctor was recommending me. Um, but I just couldn't stay retired. You know, I, ha I'm, a, I'm addicted to it. You know what I'm saying? This is my, this is my addiction. This is my drug. You know, I feel good. I, I love what I do. Um, and then in 2019, I posted that I was thinking of retiring. Um, and then that's when the promoter from Oklahoma, the promoter from Tennessee, um, decided to hit me up and says, you know what? I think you have at least one or two years in you. Um, let's do something. Um, let's wait for the pandemic. Um, I was like, perfect, because they'll give me time to recreate, redo Soul Taker again, um, um, to get something out different, something new to the people. Um, and they were, they were like, perfect. You know, it's the best time to do it. Um, so... What I did was I did in 1999, I didn't do it, but I did it in 2002. I did copyright the name Soul Taker. Um, oh. And yes, because I was told that if I don't want to get a lawsuit, you need to own your name. So 
if I was giving a name, I could not use it anywhere else. So I decided to create this character. When I created it, I registered as a sole owner of the name and the script for that character. Um, I, I think at that time it was like 200 bucks to get it registered. Um, and I had the copyrights for Soul Taker, the Devil's Bounty Hunter, and the, the story behind the character. Uh, very interesting. Very, yeah. very interesting. Thank you uh, for, again, uh, very informative uh, sharing with the fans. Uh, <clears throat> uh, because <laughs> we, <laughs> we see what the juggernaut uh, does when they produce these characters. They trademark Mm -hmm. Like almost instantly, there's a new yeah. face coming in. They're already trademarking that son yeah. bitch because yeah. they want uh, the merch money. They want everything that's surrounding that character. Because, like you said, you never know in mm -hmm. wrestling. You just yeah. don't know. Uh, so you are wishing well to your opponents, the mm -hmm. product, the fans, uh, and you're coming through the curtain, and you're the <laughs> and you're the devil's <laughs> bounty hunter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have to? Because uh, some talent, they have to flip that switch. Some well, do. might have I to do. do it a little more than others, but you got to flip that switch to yeah. get into that character. As soon as the music hits, I usually wait. I don't know if you noticed it. I usually wait uh, like five, ten seconds before I hit to come out. And that's when I, uh, I just close my eyes. Um, get into my demon my state of mind and just flip the switch and that's when I come out. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I applaud you for that. Uh, wishing well to everybody around you and coming out as a devil's bounty hunter. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> uh, no, uh, for real. Uh, good stuff right there. Um, so, with everything that we've spoken about and, and just, just not even uh, that long ago, you're telling us that right now you're in the middle of evolving uh, Soul Taker uh, yep. for one last run for a program, if you will. Yeah. That, that's what's going on? Yep. Uh, now, you obviously have a couple promotions that have reached out to you. Mm -hmm. um, is there anybody that you have in your mind, you, you know what, before this thing is done, and I know I, I've tried to retire, but they're pulling me back in. Uh, <laughs> Uh, is there any place in mind that you have uh, before you do call it a day, hang up the old boots? Uh, is there any promotion that, or place that you would like to go to before you, you, you put, definitely well, stop? Uh, this, and I'm hoping by June everything is settled so I can you know get into it. If I do, um, I got a schedule set up where um, it's going to be uh, – it's going to be Tennessee, Oklahoma, Virginia, Puerto Rico, uh, Dominican Republic. And then I hope I can end that tour with, and I'm just saying I'm hoping, um, because you never know. And like I said, I don't hold no grudges, but I hope and I pray that this person will let his, you know, his, um, how do you say this, his pride aside. Um, but I'm hoping to end the tour with a match in, with, in Richard Blake's company and in news company. Oh, oh, wow. Uh, so with, with this tour that you're looking to do at the, at the tail end of your career, you'd mm -hmm. like to do it right here in Massachusetts. Well, I'm in Connecticut, but you'd like to do it in Massachusetts. Yep. Wow. Uh, again, very interesting. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to see <laughs> I can't wait to see the evolution of what you're going to bring to the table because when you do set aside some time uh, as a wrestler and you're doing this thing, and I know you've changed, uh, you've evolved mm -hmm. this character a couple times now, uh, but to take the time, put in the effort, uh, the creativity, mm -hmm. and get this rolling. Uh, as a fan, I'm looking forward to seeing what you bring yeah. to the table. Every, everything that's going to come out with a character is custom made. Um, um, one of the articles for the gimmick is handmade by a person that did all the costume for the movie Mortal Kombat. 
Oh, wow. So wow. that's a little uh, hint. <laughs> a man is going big on the tail end. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, I know we're coming to a close uh, fairly soon on this. Um, now, what I like to do, because you've been in the game for uh, 20 plus years here, mm -hmm. uh, you've been uh, uh, around internationally, if you will. Mm -hmm. Now, there's got to be, I know there's got to be, and it's hard to pick maybe just one. There's got to be a road story somewhere uh, that, look at, look at you, look, look at you. Uh, please, whatever just hit your mind. If it's, you know, and, and this is an open forum, Soul Taker. Okay. You can swear, you can talk dirty, you can do whatever you want. Uh, you're um, laughing, and I love that smile. Please share with us. Um, well, it was in 2012. I was uh, in Cali because um, I, I went to sit down with a promoter in Cali. I've never wrestled in Cali because um, me and the promoter didn't get into terms. So I did not have the opportunity to wrestle in California. Um, but I went down there with a big buddy of mine. Um, he, I, I, he's still in wrestling, um, but he's, I think he's retiring soon. Um, uh, his name is uh, the, the, the Dark. I, he changed his names like twice. So I, I know the last time I knew him about was the Dark Dragon. Um, he was out of the Pacific Coast uh, area. Um, so he says, well, let's drive to Cali instead of flying. Cause I'm used to flying. I usually don't drive. Um, so he's like, let's drive to Cali. You know, I'll drive for a while. Cause from Seattle to Cali is like six, eight hours. So he says, let's drive. Um, I'll drive for a while. And then you drive for a while and then we'll get there. I was like, okay, no problem. Um, and it was my first time driving, uh, like from state to state. <laughs> um, it was like two o'clock in the morning. He wakes up and starts cream and starts yelling at me. Stop, stop, stop. Didn't you see that girl? I was like, what? And I just break the car in the middle of the freeway. I stopped. I was like, what girl? He says, don't you see the girl? I was like, what girl are you talking about? All of a sudden he says, that hooker. I was like, wait, wait, wait. I'm looking around. There's nothing. There's woods here, woods here. Cars coming behind me, talk, you know, honking on the car. I was like, dude, we need to move. It's like, don't you see the hooker? I was like, wait, wait, what, what hooker? So I, I, I just went to the side. I was like, okay, so let's get out. Let's see if we can find her because I don't see anybody here. <laughs> the funny thing about this story is I'm talking to him, and all this time, the motherfucker was asleep. Ah! He was talking to me in his sleep. I was like, what the hell? I didn't know he talked away in, the, in his sleep. I, I had a conversation. I was like, I thought he was awake. And I just stopped in the middle of the freeway. And then cars are passing by. And then Woods here, Woods there. I was like, wait, is this like a movie where I'm going to get killed or what? You know? Um, so I pulled over. And when I told him, hey, let's get out and look for her. And I turn on the lights. He's asleep. <laughs> and he's still talking. He's like, yeah, the girl's right there. Yeah, yeah, just talk to her. I was like, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of funny. And I still remember it. Um, last time I spoke to him, he laughed hard. Because um, I did record it that day. Um, no, you did not. And, oh, yeah, I recorded it. Because he had a camera on the dash of the car. Because um, he recorded every time he traveled to a wrestling promotion. He recorded the, the journey, you know. Um, it was a, like a logbook for him. Okay. Um, so he did pass me the video. <laughs> wow. And I told him, you're done, dude. I'm going to put this out there. <laughs> and it was funny. Uh, it was funny, you know. I had a good time with him. Um, and I'm, I'm like I told you, you know, you meet a lot of great people out there. And I can't say this enough. And this goes out to all the promoters out there. There is a lot of good talent, independent talent out there that most of you are not taking a second look because you're more focused and paying $600 to this former WWE or this DCW guy to come to your promo when you can use your own guys to build up your company. You don't need a, a, a person that already has his fame, already has his spot. Use your own guys. 
have them date the spot, take the bright, the lights, all that stuff, you know? And there's a lot of good talents out there, but most promoters don't give them a second look. That's the problem we're having. Uh, <clears throat> two things. Uh, that story, bleeping phenomenal. I'm going to clip that. I'm going <laughs> to clip that and share it uh, on the medias later. I, I love that story. That That's absolutely hilarious. Yeah. Uh, second off, I, I want to reiterate what you just said at the tail end of that because I've always said the same thing. You don't need a name to elevate your – and I know, and I know the promoters want to pack that house and sell out those seats. I get that. It's definitely a business marketing portion of it. And, again, I totally get that. You don't always need it, my friends. Yeah. Uh, utilize – the fine talent that are making your company already shine mm -hmm. uh, and, and elevate them. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I definitely, I definitely reiterate what you just said there. Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Soul Taker, uh, this has been a fantastic hour. I thought I was going to get a bunch of uh, grumpy devil talk. I didn't <laughs> know uh, what I was going to get. Uh, this was a very, very fine hour, my friend. And I cannot thank you uh, first off for, for making the time. Second off, for being so open, candor, and so informational, man. I mean, you were spot on today, and I really appreciate that. No, no, I want to thank you for taking the time um, for this interview. Um, I've been seeing your 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 show since the the first episode you made. You. <laughs> um, I'm a fan of yours. Um, I love the show. Um, I love the way you do interviews. Um, it's something that keeps you watching, and that's why I love about it. Um, and you know, you, you you interview different type of of, of wrestlers. Um, you know, you get different type of attitudes. Um, this is me when I'm not in character. This is me. This is Louis Rosado, not Soul Taker. Um, but when I get into my character, you know, that's a switch that I switch over. <laughs> and, you know, it, it's a, I just change. Everything changes. Um, but, you know, thank you. Thank all the viewers. Thank everybody that's watching and that will be watching this. Um, Angel from News. Um, Richard Blake from, um, uh, um, from NLW. Um, let's leave everything behind. I want to end my tour and retire with one more match in each of your companies. Um, let's make it happen. Let's talk. Because um, I really want this year to be my last year. Um, because, like I said, I have some, some conditions came up. And my doctor is urging me to stop. You know, And I know when, as soon as I do decide to you know, finish this tour and retire, I'm going to miss wrestling. Um, like a moto, you know, <laughs> um, but, uh, I need to do it. I need to do it. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's time to put a pin in it, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and, and you, you know, you want to do it for yourself and your family, you know, you, yeah, you yeah. gotta do that. Well, so. the thing is, um, oh, sorry about that. The thing is I'm 40, um, and I don't look 40, but I am 40. Um, and my body's not the same as it was 10, 20 years ago, um, right. you know, I, when I started wrestling, I wrestled Friday, Saturday, the same Sundays, Friday, Saturday for, for two years in a <laughs> row, you know, I didn't, cause I really wanted to get out there. Um, yeah. um, and now my body is not the same as it used to. I still, you know, move around and do my stuff, but it's not the same, you know? Um, and I just sat down one, one day with my wife and, and we talked and, you know, she says, well, the doctor's giving you the heads up, you know, if you got one more year in you, just do it, get it over with, and then just retire. And that's what I'm doing. I'm taking this year to do everything that I want to do. Um, I already got four promoters already set up. Hopefully, if everything goes well, uh, and may I start that tour. Um, but I want, and I'm, and I'm re you know, saying this again, um, Richard Blake, Angel Torres, let's put a sh shit behind us. Um, I want to end Soul Taker with a match in each company for one last time. Wow. Very That's interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, <clears throat> and I know you're at the tail end of your career. 
But for the fans that don't know you, how do we find you on the social medias? Well, on Facebook, it's uh, well. The thing is, this is the funny thing about it. In Facebook, it was it, it was international soul taker because that's the thing some people don't know. When you're in Puerto Rico wrestling and you f- go from Puerto Rico to the United States to wrestle and represent, they stop considering you a local wrestler and they oh. consider you international. So okay. for the Puerto Rican wrestling, I'm in an international wrestler, not a local. Okay? okay. So it's like here in the U.S., if you stay in, in your state, you're a local wrestler. But if you go state from state to state, that becomes an international wrestler, basically. You, you, you go out of your comfort zone. You know, I've been in the ring with guys six foot seven, seven foot tall. Um, I've been in the ring with guys five foot tall, you know, and... That's the thing. When you're in the wrestling business, don't say no. Just go and do it. Because mm-hmm. that's what's going to make the promoter say, hmm, I like this guy. Is there footage, say, on a YouTube channel uh, or something? Well, there's footage on YouTube from PWE in Puerto Rico, um, Soul Taker, PWE. Um, there is footage from um, Savio Vega's uh, company, and it's uh, Soul Taker, Puerto Rico, as Savio. Um, there is uh, footage from Fort Lee, Virginia, um, HBW, Fort Lee. Um, there is footage from all over different companies okay. I've been. So um, there is uh, footage out there. And my Facebook, I had to change it because it was blocked. <laughs> Facebook decided to block me after so many years because they said the name was too diabolic. <laughs> yes. So I had to switch it up and just put Louis Rosado and then in in the little coma is a soul taker. Um because they said it was too demonic and it was not real. Yes. <laughs> I know it's funny, but it is. Yeah, and I had to change it. Uh, sorry to laugh at your demise, sir, but that's I hilarious. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> that that's funny as hell. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh we spent a fine hour. Uh, plus with Mr. Soul Taker, getting to know him more. Uh, what I'd like to do, though, is maybe set, uh, give you an invitation right here, right now. Uh, once the evolution uh, comes out of Soul Taker and you get this tour going, maybe at the tail end, when you are definitely retired, because if you don't, your wife is going to kick your ass. Uh, <laughs> if you don't, when you get this retirement done, please come back on the show and hang out and talk to us some more. Would that be okay? Yeah, sure. No problem. Uh, that'd be amazing. Uh, thank you again. I appreciate that, my friend. This is Stirring the Pot with Don yep. Kincaid and my very special guest, Soul Taker. Thank you, sir. No, no. Thank you, uh, Don, and thank you to all the viewers. Um, and remember, Soul Taker's not done. <laughs> not for a bit. <laughs>